Well, welcome everybody. Um, we appreciate uh, everyone who is taking the time to join today. Um, we are recording the session today and we'll be uh, packaging this up and resharing it with all of you that are attending the webinar today. Um, feel free to use the chat. Um, we, we did receive a handful of questions before the, the webinar started that we'll be addressing kind of as, uh, as we go throughout the presentation and at the end. And so if you're out, please don't hesitate, throw them in the chat and we'll field those uh, as we go. Um, so uh, to kick off, my name is John Koppel. I'll be your host today. Um, and as the leader of the current client team at Expert Voice, I'm always super excited to have the chance to be able to interact with our brands, um, as well as hear from uh, folks like you that may have interesting uh, questions about what's going on in the industry, especially when we think about advocacy. Um, so as we go forward today, uh, hopefully this is a great learning opportunity for, for everybody that's on the, on the webinar. Um, when we consider what the first half of the year has looked like, um, it's been a little bit of a, a wild ride. And especially when you think about how you're trying to build a brand. Um, this is probably one of the most challenging times to build a brand ever, considering all of, all of the curveballs that we've been throwing over the first six months of the year. And uh, with that being said, you know, brands are having to rely even more heavily on things that are digital related to be able to build their brand and what other people are saying about them. And so being able to build a community of experts and advocates to speak on your behalf uh, is critical. And that's one of those uh, things that Facts and Firearms uh, has embraced and actually jumped in head first in 2020. And so, especially with the absence of being able to connect with people face to face like we have been in the past, um, again, leveraging other people to speak on your behalf is, is even more critical than ever. So um, uh, as we dive in today, um, I wanna start by introducing uh, all of our guests today. Um, so again, uh, as you all know, we've got some great guests from Facts and Firearms, um, and you can see some of their, their bright smiling faces on here. Uh, we've got Pat, who's the Director of Sales, uh, Kurt, who's the Director of Marketing, and Dustin, who oversees all their digital media. And these gentlemen combined have been really focused on building the facts and brand, especially in 2020. Um, and this year, they've, they've really ramped up everything that they're doing, not just with expert voice, but as a business to grow their brand and grow their and grow that, you know, brand ambassador force that is out there uh, speaking and advocating on their behalf. So Pat, Kurt, Dustin, welcome. So glad to have you guys today. So thanks for being on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you bet. Um, so to set the stage for the conversation today, um, I will start, uh, you guys have to bear with me. I'll give the, the quick uh, expert voice elevator story. So you guys can have, for those of you that aren't familiar with expert voice, you can understand what we do as a business. And then the bulk of the time is gonna be focused on Faxon and, and what they're doing to, to create advocacy out in the marketplace. And not only with the tools that they're using with expert voice, but just what they're doing in general. Um, so from an expert voice perspective, uh, the reason we exist is to help brands harness advocacy. And really what that means at the end of the day, we're trying to get other people to speak on your behalf. Um, and we know that credible advice, uh, it helps consumers make better buying decisions. So when you think about the last time you made a major purchase, whether it was a new rifle, or a sleeping bag or a backpack for your backcountry hunt that's coming up this fall, there's usually a handful of folks that you might be turning to to rely for, for advice on what to buy. Friends and family members, uh, credible retail associates, uh, industry pros that are using the type of gear that you may want to buy, but they're using it on a daily basis, as well as all the content we can find online um, from a digital perspective. And so that's what we've been doing over the last 16 years is building a platform where we can allow brands to find these people and, and put them to work on your behalf. And so um, in the shooting sports community alone, we partner with a little over 200 brands, obviously Facts and Firearms being uh, one, one of our best partners. Um, and we help them connect with tens of thousands of retail associates 
as well as hundreds of thousands of industry pros, whether they're guides, outfitters, military members, um, shooting instructors, et cetera. And more broadly, we work with a little over 600 brands and we have over a million verified experts that are part of the Expert Voice platform. Um, and again, at the core of what we do, we're trying to get to a recommendation. All the campaigns we run, all the content we produce, all, this, all the products that we seed, we've got one goal. It's to empower recommendations from people that are more educated and have that firsthand experience. And so that's what the Expert Voice platform provides. It provides that way for a brand to be able to connect with the right people, empower them, and then get those recommendations out in the world. And those recommendations, they really live in a few main key areas um, today. One of the first and foremost ones are on e-commerce. So um, you guys probably know us, or some of you may know us from our 3.5 days um, when we first started and got off the ground 16 years ago. Um, and our business has really changed since then. And one of our big focuses is focusing on how can we better support our brand partners in e-commerce channels. So today we generate over 8,000 credible recommendations a month. And we're giving these to brands to put these on their e-com pages and other places to help drive conversion rates and lower returns. The other place where we're putting recommendations to work is just out in the field. Um, you know, again, like thinking about those industry pros, our first responders, our military, our law enforcement personnel, they're making recommendations every day because they're using that gear every day. And so we work with over 3,000 professional organizations in several different industries. And then, of course, in retail. Um, we know retail is changing dramatically, and that's, a, and that's part of what we're going to talk about today. Um, but uh, we know that with a lot of manufacturer brands, the lion's share of their business is still going through a retail channel. And so we want to make sure that that last mile at retail, that those re retail sales associates that um, are, you know, uh, c closest to the purse strings between your product and the consumer, um, that they're empowered to, to make good recommendations on your behalf. And so Expert Voice provides an always-on platform where you can reach all these different type of experts and, again, put their recommendations to work where they matter most. Okay, enough about us. Now to the important part. Um, Faxon. Some of you guys and gals that are attending today, you may be very familiar with Faxon Firearms. Um, it's a great brand. They're growing like crazy, but some of you may not. And so uh, we want to give uh, the Faxon team the opportunity to just tell us a little bit about your company. Tell us about people that are maybe not as familiar with the brand, maybe a little bit about your history and your product. So I think, Pat, maybe you can, you can kick us off there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Faxon got our, our start as Faxon Machining. Uh, that was about 42, 43 years ago. Uh, started by two brothers, Bob and Barry Faxon. So it's a, you know, a American family owned manufacturing business at, at its core. Um, the machining business has a background in automotive parts, deep hole drilling, oil and gas, aerospace um, primary market now is defense work and out of the machining business spawned the firearms business fax and firearms so fax and firearms was started in 2012 um, bob and barry have been life lifelong gun guys and wanted to get into that market had a lot of machines and uh, had some ideas for some products and stepped stepped into that world so Faxon is best known for our barrel manufacturing for the AR-15 and AR-10 platforms, but we also do a whole slew of parts, accessories, and now we are doing some complete firearms that we've really started getting into late last year, early this year. So historically, people have been able to see our products on the major online resellers, you know, the Brownells, Optics Planet, Midway, all, all the big guys online. But one area that we've really been pushing for more business is in the retail stores. Um, there's 60,000 plus gun shops in the country, and there's a lot of uh, new gun owners and, and new people into the AR building market and similar markets that 
their first stop is to walk into a store. So uh, we, you know, we want to be visible and we want to be seen in those locations. And we want the people behind the counter to understand and know our products and be able to actually give solid recommendations. No, that, that's perfect. Thanks, Pat. Um, yeah, and I, I always love kind of hearing the background again, like, you know, you guys have been making firearm parts since 2012, but you guys have been around for decades uh, in the machining business. And so uh, it's cool to just to see how businesses evolve and how they come to be. Um, and you may not always realize that they, they aren't what they have. They aren't today what they've always been. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, on, on that note of, of retail, um, you know, re retail is obviously one of those places that is super unique, right? Like, um, oh, sorry, one second here. Um, and there are obviously ways that, you know, you guys are, are trying to build advocates. Um, but from a firearm perspective, um, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you've got to walk into a retail door to go make a firearm purchase for, for a complete firearm. So that, that last mile of retail still becomes super critical. Um, but uh, as we go through right now, like we want to touch on some of the ways that maybe you guys work with Expert Voice. Um, and before we get into the weeds though, like may, maybe you guys can talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, these individuals that you're trying to connect with as brand ambassadors, like who are they? Why are they important to you? And, and why do you guys need to rely on uh, ambassadors or advocates to speak on your behalf? Yeah, sure. So I think one of the biggest challenges that um, we face, and for those in the firearms industry, they, you know, they're, they're painfully aware of this, is we can't really leverage any of the traditional like social media advertising channels. So we can't do Facebook ads, really. We can't do Google AdWords. There's just all these... Um, you know, traditional marketing channels that we can't even touch. Um, and so that's really where, you know, we've focused a lot on, on you know, brand advocates uh, to really help us get the message out. But, you know, the other piece of it is, is, you know, the, the size of our company, you know, we're, we're a mid-sized company for our industry. But, um, you know, like Pat was saying, you know, we really want to try and, you know, get into a lot of these, these gun shops. And they're anything from a mom and pop, you know, all the way up to kind of a, you know, mid to big box size store. And our real concern was how do we make sure that we can get, you know, our message out there, that, that we're positive, that, you know, everything that Bob and Barry Faxon, you know, worked so hard to build on that, that you know, those advocates are, are passing on that same message and really, you know, representing us in, in the way that we want to be represented. And really, you know, Expert Voice was a perfect fit for that. It's just a great way for us you know, to, to utilize the platform to reach a large number of people um, in a really, you know, cost and time effective way. Love it. Yeah, thanks for that, Kurt. Um, and as we start to dive into maybe what some of those ways look like, I think that's important to remember is there's, there are tons of different ways that you can kind of build up that advocacy channel and who those people are on your behalf. And we, we, we try and make it easy, uh, at least as easy as possible. So thanks for sharing that, Kurt. Mm -hmm. um, so diving in a little bit more, like let, let's talk specifically about the retail channel. Like we, we know that's a focus for you guys. You guys are trying to, to grow that base of, of uh, retail doors, as, as Pat, you mentioned earlier. Like uh, how, how is that going for you? How is uh, leveraging expert voice and the platform uh, allowed you to do that or, or what are the results you guys are seeing so far? Uh, it's, it's been a great tool for us to be able to use. Um, you know, I, I run our sales team. I run our sales department, our customer service department. Um, relatively speaking, we're a pretty small team. We only have a few guys, so it's just not feasible to be able to travel places and, you know, hit all 60,000 gun shops in the country. Um, it's just not realistic. Um, so I first got exposed to expert voice back when it was 3.5. Uh, when I worked, I was an assistant manager at the largest retail gun chain in the country or gun shop and range chain in the country. Um, but I was back when I was there when it was only two or three locations. Um, so 
I used it a lot because I always wanted to know what I was talking about when, when someone started asking specific questions. Um, you know, there's a lot of general things that, that people will kind of regurgitate in a shop and it may not be totally true or there may be key details that are missing. And I never wanted to not have that information. Um, so being able to get the information directly from the manufacturer was a huge help to me. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm trying to carry on to our potential retail locations or even ones that are carrying our product and they just have employees who are interested in learning a little bit more and you know, may not want to scour the website to try to gather everything. You know, we can put it in really concise messaging, cover the details that are critical, the things we want, make sure they understand our product line and what our various offerings are. Um, and that, that allows them to be as informed as possible. Um, and, and the big thing with us this year, being that we're in, more into the complete firearms market, guns are sold in gun shops largely. Um, this year alone, we are up 40% nationwide uh, over same time last year for Nick's background checks for gun sales. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of first time buyers, new buyers, walking into shops. Um, and the critical thing for us is making sure that when that person walks up to the counter and they start talking to the, the gun store employee, that if that person's talking about our brand, we want to control the information that they're, that they're passing along to the customer. Um, even when you go with someone like on, on YouTube or any other social media platform that may produce videos for you, if you're a manufacturer, I can guarantee you've dealt with somebody who maybe missed a slight detail or didn't phrase things how you want it phrased. And, and there's still things you can't control when you're dealing with uh, more of the influencer crowd that could be that key detail that, that makes somebody purchase uh, or makes somebody choose your brand over the next brand that's on the rack. So that's a critical piece to us is being a small sales team we want to make sure, you know, here, here's the five main points we want. We want someone to understand when they're looking at our ascent line of 5.56 five, rifles or, you know, here's, here's what sets our 9mm rifles slightly apart from our competition. So that, that's really the key component for us. Nice. And I know uh, um, you guys have also been, again, as we think about expanding your retail footprint, have you guys been able to use expert voice at all to find new dealers or ha have conversations with new dealers, Pat? Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're also using it as a, essentially a sales lead generator. Um, I was just down in, in North Carolina two weeks ago and I stopped into a shop to talk to some guys and I'm, and I could pull up on my phone that, you know, these five employees from this store have all, trained on our products. So now I can walk in and actually, you know, when I'm talking to the person who may be making the purchasing decision or the manager of the store or the owner, I can say, you know, if you haven't heard of us or you're not familiar with us, or you, maybe you don't know specifics about our product line, go talk, you know, go talk to John over there because I've actually seen that he's trained on all of our products. He's taken all of our, our quizzes, our edgy games. He's passed them all. So he at least you know, has that, that key information. Um, and it's, it's been a really useful tool for us and seeing, being able to see as granular as what employees at a location took the training is huge. Um, it also it, on the analytics side of things, being able to see kind of the heat maps and see that, Hey, we've got, we've got five to eight shops in, you know, around the Houston area that, that all have multiple employees taking, quizzes and are interested and, and are gathering the information. So maybe it's worth a, a worth a trip down there because you can, you know, you can fly in and hit six or eight shops in the span of a couple of days and you're not, you're dedicating a, a cross country trip to visit one, you know, potential customer. Yeah. No, I, I love hearing that. And I, lo I love the, your example from North Carolina uh, coming in hot just from last week. So yeah. And, and that's the beauty of that data to your point, right? Like it's updated every day, it's live time and it's useful uh, it, it, as much as you want to put it to work. So I, I love hearing that that's, 
uh, accomplishing kind of the intent that you had around some of that, Pat. Yep. Money. Um, obviously, you know, we, we talk, we've talked a lot about, you know, empowering and improving our recommendations with retail associates um, and making sure that that last mile at the register is important. But a little bit further up in the funnel, there's this massive group of uh, industry pros out there that are super influential on purchase decisions, purchase decisions that consumers make. And I know that's been an area of focus where you guys have seen a lot of growth. Um, Dustin, maybe you could talk a little bit about what you guys are doing to build fans outside of retail doors to drive and propel your business forward. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, one of the, you know, bigger things, you know, for us is our guardian purchase program. And uh, real quick, can you guys hear me? Okay. I know I hopped on yes. late. All right. All right. Yes. Thanks. So is our guardian purchase program, which is our, you know, kind of our umbrella program for military, LE first responders and, and a few others. And this is a program that um, we started to bring more towards the forefront, even before we got uh, onboarded with expert voice. Uh, it's just, you know, kind of our way to say thank you um, to that community and let them know that they're valued by us, that uh, they, they have a champion in Faxon. Um, but it really has helped us with Expert Voice to grow and expand it uh, because what we're able to do is kind of curate to that audience. You know, the, everybody's on a media assault all the time. We are just flooded in it. And especially right now, so many people are at home. And if you get your Sunday reminders on your iPhone of how much screen time you've spent every week, it, it seems to be steadily going up. And there's a lot of people who are, you know, fans of our brand you know, that may own one or two guns and they just like the content. You know, they're not necessarily people who are going to be repeat buying month after month or even year after year. And, and I think that, you know, is the same for, for many folks in the firearms field. So this helps us curate to an audience that they're already being flooded with media, but when they're on expert voice, they know they're being served up something that's of value. Uh, so it isn't just a scroll or swipe right or left or anything like that. This is something that's being served up to them. Uh, that uh, that that you guys feel um, that they would be interested in, uh, but it does. It helps us reach our key audiences within military and law enforcement. Um, we've had uh, you know tens of thousands of engagements. Um, I think uh, thirty-seven thousand edge games were passed uh, so far uh, for military and law enforcement, and also that also helps us know how are we reaching these people and how are they becoming part of the program. So traditionally folks have been able to, you know, sign up through our website and, and be part of that program. But this is also just another great funnel um, that, you know, if there are military law enforcement first responders that maybe aren't active on traditional uh, channels of social media, uh, but they're familiar with expert voice, you know, we're, we're getting them to. And every time we do a social post about, hey, experts, have you checked out Faxon's modules on expert voice, you know, that's, it's always an uptick. Um, but, you know, the people who are on the inside and who have already been exposed to expert voice, you know, are, are always excited to hear that, that we've joined and, and that they could benefit from it. Love it. Love it. I love hearing that. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's one of our most avid and engaged groups uh, inside of our, you know, million plus members that are active on the platform today. And, uh, you know, we, we appreciate and support our, our military and our first responders, and uh, they, they are hyperactive when it comes to engaging, especially in the shooting sports space with, with partners like you guys and, and others. So uh, I, I love to hear that that's continuing to grow for you guys, and we're helping to add to the, the top of the funnel for folks that are getting exposed to Faxon in that way. Um, one of the other big things that you guys are we're hoping to do as a, just as a business this year, not just with expert voice, but as a business was to attract new buyers, right? People that did, that don't know about your brand or didn't know about your brand, or maybe even to, to Pat's earliest comment around, you know, making sure that you guys are part of the consideration when you're trying to decide between two types of, uh, you know, two types of firearms to purchase. And so um, the ability to elevate your message to, to the audience. I know that's been impactful for you guys. Um, but I mean, what, what stands out there to you guys as far as when you think about trying to reach new buyers, like what's going well for you and, and what are you leveraging today to help 
kind of proliferate that more broadly for uh, new buyers? Sure. I mean, I know that um, one of the big things that we've championed since day one, and, and we've been very, very effective at, is for those that know us, our our brand equity is really, really high. Our, our you know, our, our customers are very loyal, um, and, and we take great pride in that, and we do everything we can to foster that and, and build off of that, you know. But with that, the, the challenge that we've found is, and again, because of you know, uh, being kind of a mid-sized firearms company and, and also that we can't use those same marketing channels, it makes it a challenge to reach out to new folks. Um, and so that's really been one of our big focuses and, and Expert Voice has been a great platform to help us do that. Um, and, and we're looking to do that in a number of different ways. Um, a lot of the big initiatives that we're doing this year really do focus around content. So we're obviously going to be, you know, innovating and putting out new products and you know, letting people know about those. But the other thing that we're really trying to do, like Pat mentioned, there's a lot of new, you know, first-time firearms buyers. And so our one of our big focus is really to focus on putting out content to kind of, you know, help them out, guide them through this process. You know, the the I always say the great thing about AR-15s is you have so many options and so many choices, you know, to customize it to exactly what you want. But when you're new, that's kind of drinking from the fire hose. That's a, that's a lot to kind of deal with, you know? And so really what we're doing is saying, all right, you know, we'll help you out. You know, here's some information. Here's why you should consider, you know, this over this, you know, and, and honestly, it may be a faction product. It may not, that's okay. You know, but that's really what we're trying to do is, is not only put out a lot of good information, but also kind of be a thought leader in that and just help folks out because we figure, you know what, if we're giving people information they want, hopefully they'll come back to us. Yeah, one of the things we, we also like to do with our content now is also planning for the, the long game, making things that are a little more evergreen, making things that, uh, you know, are going to mean something to someone when they're actually researching the brand. Um, you know, so you could do, you know, funny and gitchy or high intensity movie trailer stuff, you know, all you want. And that stuff's fun and great and good. And we do some of that too. But we also want to be putting out regular content that really lets people see who we are as a brand and the people who actually work here, and kind of what goes into it. You know, a big part of that in this last year has been starting our blog and podcast and uh, putting up uh, new content every week. You know, John, we've, we had you on several weeks ago, which was a lot of fun. Um, and just not just doing, you know, spewing ad speak at people. Um, you know, we're talking to different people in the industry. Uh, you know, we've had folks from Crimson Trace and Lockdown. We've had youth shooters on. Uh, this week, we have uh, the owner of CNG Holsters on. You know, people that uh, can speak into the industry as well as folks who work here. You know, we've had Pat on, Kurt's been on, uh, Bob Faxon has been on, um, and to give, you know, a little bit of behind the scenes, how did this thing get started? Why did you launch this product? But also to understand that at the end of the day, uh, even though most of us may not see it this way when we're neck deep in it, but when it comes to firearms at a certain level, it becomes a luxury product. You know, this is not people buying milk, bread, and eggs. Um, these are people with some sort of disposable income. And so there's a lifestyle that goes along with it. And so having media um, and content that also encompasses the lifestyle in a conversational and approachable way uh, is a big deal. And the nice thing with the media focus on Expert Voice is that, you know, we're not just limited to the edge of games. We could actually repop a lot of that content uh, and put it on Expert Voice and see how it trends in either direction. Um, so, you know, every week we, we put the podcast up, obviously people can post photos and, and interact with experts and such, uh, but that's definitely been a big deal for us. Yeah. And, uh, again, if you guys haven't had a chance to see one of the facts in podcasts, like Dustin's not just a pretty face here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> and he's not a pretty face. So there's, there's <laughs> <that>. <laughs> uh, but the content's great. Um, uh, and you, you guys do a lot of stuff, even out of studio. I know some of them have been on site at different locations. So, um, as you guys have been doing, whether it's your own digital outreach through the podcast and the, in the media that you guys are generating or, any of the content that you guys are posting on expert voice, are there any surprises of like the type of individuals that are interacting with you that you guys have found this year? I would say that, um, 
one of the big things, I mean, we, we knew that it was a strong audience, but that uh, military law enforcement segment um, has just been huge uh, on expert voice for us. I mean, we knew it was going to be, you know, a, a pretty big portion of it, but the, you know, this, honestly, the speed in which that segment ramped up for us was pretty amazing. Um, I had to kind of deal with sort of the back end of setting up, you know, 11 billion coupon codes and that's okay, but <laughs> it's all good, you know? So um, I think for, for us, that's, you know, it's, it's a market that we knew and was strong for us, but um, again, the, the, the speed in which it ramped up on expert voice was pretty amazing. I would say another big one um, from the kind of the dealer and sales side of things is looking at the number of big box store employees that are interacting with our training. Um, us being a small to mid-sized company, um, generally companies our size aren't really equipped to launch full steam into all of the big box chain stores. They have a lot of requirements to deal with. You know, they, they, there's a lot of, there's a lot of back end stuff that if, if you're used to, you know, selling to an online reseller and you try to get into Academy sports, you're going to be blown away at the, the paperwork, the requirements, what they want to see from you. So for someone like us who may not quite be ready to make that full leap, we still have people in those locations who are familiar with and advocating for our brand. If someone walks in and happens to mention that, you know, I'm not looking to buy a rifle or I already bought one from Academy and now I want to build one. And do you know anybody, you know, know any good barrel manufacturers or bolt carrier manufacturers? You know, where can I go to get stuff to build? Uh, you still have those people in place in those stores, even if you're not selling those products in those locations. Got it. Got it. Well, th those all sound like good surprises then, uh, both on the military LE side as well as on the, on the, on the big box side. So uh, we, we love hearing that. Um, as we're getting closer to uh, kind of rounding things out um, in, in wrapping up today, um, you know, I'm sure with all the folks that are on the, on the webinar today, they're probably curious just how you guys have adjusted to all the hurdles that have been <laughs> kind of thrown up. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you could make a laundry list of them uh, in the first half of 2020. But I mean, how have you guys navigated through uh, COVID and everything else that's happened so far? Like, what, what are you guys doing as a business? And and how has that uh, played out for you uh, through the first half of the year? It's it's definitely been interesting, uh, to, to say the least. Um, you know, from having trade shows canceled to events at different locations. I mean, I'm used to, I'm someone who's used to traveling at least twice a month. And, you know, for about four or five months, it's been no travel. So... I, I like to get in front of people. I like to interact with people. So when, when you don't have that capability anymore or you have to shift your approach, uh, you, you have to be able to adapt to that. Um, if you're wholly reliant on being face-to-face -face with somebody, then you're going to, whether there's COVID or not, you're going to spend an exorbitant amount of money traveling. Um, so when, when you're worrying about managing a budget for a sales staff and, and trying to decide where dollars are spent, you know, if you can spend, you know, a certain amount of money to reach all of these locations, because that, that is a key thing that a lot of people may not realize is that any retail shop employee can get on expert voice at no cost. So they don't have a barrier to entry to gain the information. Um, so, being able to put it in front of them um, when we may not have a chance to see them in person or, you know, they may not be a shop that maybe it's a shop that does a lot of business in your market, but they're not big enough that they feel it necessary to travel to SHOT Show or to NRA Show. You know, this may be the only opportunity for them to actually interact with your brand. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that's a really good point. Just again, leveraging tools that, 
that you can do that one to many or even still do a more of an intimate connection and even if you can't be there in person to your point pat i was i was thinking myself i think this is the longest i haven't been on an airplane since the middle of march <laughs> which is like my longest stretch in my professional career and it it's a little different you have to adjust right yeah absolutely what, what, what about outside of expert voice? Like, are there any other big shifts you guys have had to make as a business? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, one, one of the things I think we did though, that was advantageous was just taking the time that maybe we would have been spending like at an RA show or something like that. Um, and being able to kind of hone in on, okay, what are our next steps coming out of this pandemic? You know, there's there's a big gun run. There's a lot of new gun owners. You know, now's the time for us to take a step back and go, okay, is the brand where we want it? You know, have we established our brand voice the way we want it? What does growth look like for um, uh, just our total brand presence in the marketplace? And so Pat, Kurt, and I and, and others in the, you know, leadership team have been doing, you know, all kinds of meetings and mock-ups and things about, you know, what does faction look like in the next few months? What does faction look like in the next couple of years? Um, but with that, there's also short-term things that we could pick up on right away, uh, including, you know, what is our brand voicing like and making sure that we're staying true to that. You know, if we establish core values as a company, um, is all of our media outlets reflecting that? You know, the things yeah. that we say, the things that we do, the things that we post. And right now, especially when it comes to influencers and, um, you know, the blogosphere of the firearms community, it is very rampant. It's very uh, polarizing. It's very sensationalist at times. And that's never been Paxson. So how do you not give in to that for the easy likes and for the cheap vanity metrics? Um, you know, we, we want stuff that's, you know, going to be consistent with our brand. Uh, even if it gets, you know, you know, fewer follows than somebody who's posting something just crazy outrageous, um, you know, about protests or about, you know, whatever. Um, so it's, it's given us some time to be able to kind of focus back in and say, okay, here are our values here, we, how, how we're going to hash it out in the future. And then it's allowed us to, to be able to do some testing with just, you know, how we're posting, what's our, um, you know, what's our rhythm, what's our pulsing, uh, you know, with the type of media that we're putting out, but it is a high demand time. You know, there's clearly a gun run. I mean, the, the week that the lockdown orders came in in Ohio, I was actually getting ready to do an interview for the podcast. And one of our sales guys was in the hall uh, getting a call from several dealers in the area saying, send us everything you got, you know, send, send us everything. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously because of that, you know, we're not the only ones, but you know, there's, there's a supply and demand issue right now, especially as we try to honor our dealer network. Um, so you know, it's, uh, you know, it's easier to post the sexier things of our product line, but if I don't have them in stock, we try not to give them, you know, all that much attention. It's, it's about kind of tampering those expectations, but also letting people know, you know, yes, we, you know, we are in full blown production right now, uh, trying to keep up, uh, you know, with orders and, and the, you know, kind of the new normal for the time being. Um, and, and for the most part, I, I think the audience has been, been really, really respectful that but yeah being yeah. very tactful with what we post and when to uh, to help manage those expectations and, and i think the piece to that is is just that you know um in in q1 we were planning out what we were going to do for the summer you know and we had a lot of content that you know we we kind of had in the pipeline and we're planning out you know working with different you know pro staff and ambassadors and you know we we had some some range days and a bunch of events that were, you know, in, in early process that we were all set and that all just came to a stop, you know? And so that's where we had to get very creative and say, okay, well, how can we, how can we accomplish some of that? Or how can we get close, you know, with the, with the constraints that we're all kind of looking at. So. Nice. Yeah. And, and, and you guys kind of, kind of talked about this and hit on this, but you know, and, and, and you mentioned this directly, Dustin, but as you guys are planning for the future, <laughs> I mean, you, I can only assume the crystal ball that's brewing there, but uh, that, that's yeah. right now, right? I mean, like you said, it's because of demand. It's because of uncertainty. Like we have, sure. a, we may or may not have an election coming up this year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, 
and Pat, Pat and our product director, uh, Jay Wilson, have been doing just tremendous amounts of screen time forecasting, um, trying to figure out what these things are going to look like and, and what type of demand that we can expect. And the, the interesting thing is that our kind of brand reach, um, you, know, if, you know, with Expert Voice, with some of the things we are already doing, would tick uh, in a pretty big way had really wonderful forecasting for this year before the pandemic hit uh, and then the pandemic hit and then the rioting hits and then it just explodes even more and you know there are things that maybe we used to sell a couple hundred of a month now we're selling a couple thousand of a month you know how do we continue that and so that's that's really fallen a lot on uh, you know Pat and and Jay but from our standpoint we want to make sure that if people are new to the market and they are new to just being a gun owner that they find you know, a place here that's, you know, that's going to welcome them in, you know, that's going to make them feel comfortable with the lifestyle change and, and things that they've made to become a gun owner or what have you. Um, and so that's why, you know, the content has to breed that, you know, has to be informational, has to be educational. Um, you know, even if it's not the sexiest stuff all the time, you know, it, it's necessary things that, you know, we need to, we need to lay out for those new folks because hopefully uh, there won't be a huge, uh, you know, pawn shop run after all of this, you know, where people are selling things off. Hopefully, you know, some folks, some folks keep these things and they understand the lifestyle a little better. So, um, but yeah, just kind of, kind of making that kind of welcome pad, um, you know, for that new crowd for sure. But yes, it is tough. It is tough. And Pat and Jay, I'm sure their eyes are crossed sometimes trying to get through those spreadsheets and understand, you know, what our new normal could look like. Yeah, that's, I, I feel the pain there. We're, we're in the midst of doing the same thing. Um, uh, as we wrap up today, um, uh, there were a handful of questions, again, that were submitted uh, before the uh, webinar started, and we're going we're gonna to knock those out. Um, if you guys have any additional questions that you guys want to ask Pat, Kurt, Dustin, um, or, or myself, uh, go ahead and throw those in the Zoom chat now. And we'll we'll start diving in on some of these questions that were that were sent over uh, prior. And so one of the first questions, guys, and this 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 one's directly for you guys at Faxon. Um, someone asked to please speak about how potential vendors can pursue a relationship with Faxon. Well, that's an easy one. Um, best thing to do is go to our website, faxonfirearms.com. Um, on that top banner, there's a uh, header that says OEM and dealers, and then there's a link for become a fax and dealer. Uh, you'll fill out a quick little uh, form that gets sent over to me and our sales team, and then someone reaches out to you, usually within a few days. Money, great, thank you, Pat. Um, the next question was, um, someone, someone had posted, oh, and perfect. Dustin's got that link posted up in the, in the chat. So if you guys want that link, it's, it's coming in hot from Dustin. So thanks for doing that, Dustin. Yep. Um, the next question was, um, you know, there are folks that are really interested in finding the right ambassadors. And so sometimes like the Instagram stars and, you know, they may not be the best ambassador for you. So how do you guys go about finding the right ambassadors for Faxon? A lot of it really has to do with, um, you know, finding and getting to know the person behind that brand, right? Because in essence, that's, that's what those folks are, right? In a way, yes, it's a person, but they're also in a way their own brand, right? And we just need to make sure that, that we're both in alignment, you know, for the same, the same goals and the same values more than anything. Um, I think that's the biggest key of it is to just, you know, Dustin kind of hit on it too. You know, it's, it's so important to be true to, you know, your own brand and your own values and don't deviate because it is, it's easy to kind of, you know, um, find things that will get a lot of, of quick, you know, likes and comments and some folks, that's how they run it. And that's, that's their business strategy. You know, uh, for us, we, we take a, lo a longer game, you know, um, and it really is, it's, it's about longevity for us. And it's about making sure that we're putting out content that, you know, isn't just going to be this flash in the pan. You know, we're not just going to, um, you know, partner up with, you know, necessarily the latest whoever, you know, to get to get some content out there and to, to get 
honestly artificial reach. Um, you know, yeah. so when we're looking and, and kind of evaluating, hey, who do we want to work with? Um, we just make sure that, that it is, that, that we have very similar, um, you know, goals and, and, and values in what we do. Yeah. And in the interest of full disclosure, that is something that we're actually refining now um, because we have kind of grown from the small to midsize, um, getting more traction. And as new people come in, whether it's folks who are, you know, Instagram influencers or, you know, pro staff folks, you know, we, we get a lot of sponsorship inquiries, you know, for people who shoot competitive uh, three gun tactical games, things like that. Um, you know, some of those things, they go through a little more scrutiny. You know, we, we ask for bios, we ask for links to their social media. Uh, and some of the folks that are getting more attention from us, the, those get run up the ladder you know, all the way to the COO and the ownership um, to make sure that they're, that they're on brand with us. Um, and, and we kind of do some, some filtering uh, in there. But yes, uh, that's the easy way to say is be careful and be choosy. Uh, the hard way to say is you've got to really sit down with the heart and soul of your business and say, what are our goals? What is our DNA? What are our values? And then that makes that process a lot easier. Um, and and we, we have, we've asked for help from our legal team uh, to make sure that we have all that sort of stuff squared away. I think that's something that gets overlooked a lot. Uh, you know, you got to be careful about, you know, people speaking on behalf of the brand that maybe aren't necessarily employees of the brand and you could be held liable and there's all kinds of stuff. Um, so we have reached out, you know, to our legal team to help us with this refining process as well. So it's not quite as easy as just finding the person, you know, who's a good shooter and who has a, lot, a strong social media following. It's, it's going to need to be somebody that is hip to what you're doing, matches your company values. And I would strongly recommend that you have your, you know, documentation in order to. Yeah, I think a, a key a key thing when we look at people is understanding what type of audience that person influences. Um, you know, in the firearms world, there's a lot of different kind of sub segments of of users and either consumers of content or just purchasers that may not have overlap. So you could look at a lot of the big YouTube guys and they'll be great for just general exposure, but they may have a million plus followers or subscribers on YouTube. But if three or four of them probably have 80 plus percent of overlap between who their followers are. So you're not really reaching 4 million people. You're re reaching, you know, two mm -hmm. and, and there's, and there's only a little bit of a different crowd in each one of them where you could, you know, an approach we've taken is look for people who are kind of up and coming, who are really putting a lot of effort into their content and have their, their viewers down into kind of a certain category or they have their corner of the market or their niche. So, you know, the, the guy that you go to for competition shooting content may not be the same guy for training and tactics. It may not be the same guy for, Hey, I'm just an average gun guy and I'm here to try to educate people through the, the first time gun buyer process, or, you know, I'm a, I'm a hunter who's using ARs solely for hunting. You know, there's a lot of different areas and I think you're, you're better to target small to mid-sized guys who are very active and have loyal, but smaller followings in each of their own unique markets rather than one who just has, you know, a really big number of followers, because we know that, with you know with the growth of the digital era and and social media and 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 these metrics that people use a lot of that can be faked i mean followers can be bought engagement can be faked on you know instagram posts and you know everybody knows the little tricks to get more people to comment on a post um you know so that those are what i mean what dustin referred to as vanity metrics you know they they may not lead to anything for you and you may if you're a brand that's trying to decide where to spend your money you may spend a lot of money on something that doesn't really get you anything yeah and and i love hearing that from you guys and and that's totally in line with i mean again we work with hundreds of different manufacturers and that's in line with what we recommend from a best in class standpoint like it's one thing to have that social billboard, I've got a million followers and great, like you can pay them to, to be a billboard online. It's, but if you want to actually have impact, 
what we recommend and what you guys are saying is, right, like find those folks that have meaningful followers that are actually engaged in their content. I'd rather have a hundred ambassadors with a thousand followers that are engaged than a celebrity with a million followers. I'll take that all day long because we know engagement rates are going to be way higher and the actual authenticity is going to come through so much more uh, genuinely than it would. Uh, People aren't dumb. (laughs) They, They know at that level when you're in the million plus follower range, it's, you know, it's, it's a pay to play situation at that point. So, um, let's see the last question we've got here, um, that we'll tackle today is again, this one's specifically for you guys at Faxon. You, you guys don't make the cheapest firearm option out there. You're, you're not, you're not playing in the, in the basement. Right. Um, so the question is how do you get people to buy quality versus buying by price? Oh, that's, that's a battle that it's a, uh, it's a battle that you will fight forever. Um, I don't know that you always can, you know, there's a certain segment of people that will buy solely based on priced and, and depending on what type of user they are, it may be perfectly acceptable. I mean, there are, there are people that buy the cheapest they are they can possibly find and then it sits in the closet and it never gets shot. Um, so that person may not be the one that that you can convince to buy a more quality product because if it never gets used, then the, the, their quality doesn't really matter to them. You know, they they only they may only care about saving a few hundred bucks. Um, so really, I think it's about targeting the the audience that you really want to be getting that message to. Um, you can't you know you can't try to explain that to every single person who says, I want to buy a gun. Um, and a lot of people will go through a progression and where the more, you know, where, where we see a lot of benefit is actually when people buy the lower quality products and then try to use them, um, more for, you know, more frequently than your average user and they see the failures and then they're far more open to listening to why, you know, maybe why that, that bolt carry is a little bit more expensive. Why I shouldn't be buying a barrel that costs $50 uh, because the steel was imported from Mexico and it doesn't have any quality standards. Um, you know, it's really about finding the people that are receptive to that message. That That's your first, otherwise you're just going to be, you know, you're just going to be preaching and uh, you're going to be preaching on a New York city street corner and nobody's going to be listening unless you know, who you're going for. Yeah. And I, I think from a marketing and media standpoint, you know, we, we really try to own who we are and where we are. Um, you know, I, I think people like feeling comfortable with a brand when they buy something um, and they're proud to have that affiliation. It's the same reason, you know, why, I mean, you could go to Aldi and buy a whole bunch of stuff you could buy at Whole Foods, but Whole Foods feels a whole lot nicer, uh, you know? <laughs> and so, we, you know, I, I've, I've found that even in my limited time with the company, I've, I've only been with Faxon since November, the fact that people can point to Cincinnati, Ohio on a map and say Faxon is here, you know, this is where my gun came from, this is where my parts came from. Uh, and, and so, you know, we like to, we like to own that. Um, and it does, you know, help us capitalize a little bit on something that might feel a little more local, uh, a little more boutique. Um, but we still try to be competitive in that range, you know, uh, as far as, you know, our entry level ARs, you know, are under a thousand dollars, but they're, you know, they're full on, you know, facts and items. So we try to, you know, you know, walk that walk for sure, but, but definitely being able to capitalize on what are you getting as being part of the brand, not just how much did you spend on this particular part, um, I think is a, you know, is a, is a big deal. Love it. Love it. Uh, well, gentlemen, thank you. That was fantastic today. I think we've all been well fed. Um, again, Pat, Kurt, Dustin, you guys are awesome. We appreciate the massive time investment and for you guys to take the time to just share with everyone here. Um, about who you guys are and your story and, and what's working for you. Um, and we're excited to see that continue to grow in the back half of 20 and beyond. Um, and we'll also a big thanks to all of you attendees that showed up today. 
Um, again, we will be saving and um, uh, putting this recording together. We'll send it out to everybody. And so if you guys have any questions, uh, hit us up. If you guys need a connection, um, you know, either on the expert voice side or the facts inside, let us know. And uh, yeah, we appreciate everyone attending today. Th thanks, gents.